Hi all, this is a unscripted tutorial on uh, migration basics uh, and how do you get you started with migrations in, in Rails. I'll show you two types of migrations as well as how to um, add some indexes. All right, uh, first off, let's, um, let's uh, create a migration based off of a table. Uh, we're in a brand new Rails application with uh, SQLite, so there's no um, database configuration necessary. Rails G model duck, uh, and we're going to give it two attributes here. So duck is going to be the name of the model, and it's going to create a ducks table for us. We'll see that shortly. We're going to pass um, email, because all ducks have email addresses, string color. Um, Uh, string and age integer. Run that and you'll see it'll create for us right here a migration file. Now what this says here is it's located in DB migrate directory and this is a big long timestamp. Uh, and it's the year backwards down to the day and then um, the time and the reason why we have this is because it'll make ensure that for the most part they're all unique uh, so if uh, two people are working on a project uh, we won't have a conflict uh, and it'll know which one came first uh, so let's open this up I'm going to use Vim you can use uh, whatever you like All right, so now we have um, the migration open. We could add other things onto here. We could change age to years, for instance. Um, and then we can go uh, to our terminal and run rake db migrate. Now when we run Rails C, we can call duck, and we can see that it has um, email, color, uh, and year, age and years. Uh, also created at and updated at, uh, which come from this single line right here. So that's the first type of migration. One, one thing I want to point out here is that change, we have def change here. Uh, we can put anything in change that can also be reversed uh, because we can also do rake db roll back and now you can see that uh, it, it dropped the table right there but we want we do want it so we're gonna leave it and now say for instance okay let's get it um, now we can commit this get commit M first really bad name don't name your migrations like that but uh, it makes sense in the context of the video oh we have to add everything okay so now we have everything committed there um, the reason I did that for in the sake of this part of this demonstration is that now essentially this database this migration is locked we can't change this migration we're going to go off and do some other work, and we don't want to mess with this because um, we're, we would essentially, after that, usually push this up to a repository, uh, and uh, my coworkers could pull it down, and if they pull it down and I make a change to it, uh, Rails is not going to know to run this migration again because it's already been run. How can it tell? Or how can we tell that Rails knows it's been run? We can just call status on the end here, and we can see that it's gone up, um, which means that it's been run. Uh, and why up, you say? Well, I'll show you. Rails G migration. We can generate a migration on our own. This is the way uh, we want to do something. Um, uh, if we want to modify a table, essentially, 
uh, this is what we would do. So we'll say add birth date to ducks. And then we can do uh, birth date ducks. Or not ducks, date. So um, Rails is going to do a little bit of introspection on our on our migration name and it's going to notice this two ducks part so it's going to know that we're going to modify the ducks table uh, and then so it'll automatically add this for us but we could certainly add it manually I'll show that in a moment when we head back here and we go to db migrate now we have uh, add birth date to ducks you can see that it's stuck in here the change method and add birth date um, birth date is the second um, argument and this is the name of the attribute and we're putting it on the ducks table and date is the type of database column we're gonna have now because this is simple uh, we can also do this remove ducks uh, and years um, because we can calculate that now from date so uh, so again this is something that can be reversed uh, which is why we're um, doing this here um, but we could also change this a little bit uh, and to show you where the up and the down come from Now, when we separate, do these separately, we also need to do the reverse here. So we need to remove column, and we don't need that anymore. Uh, and then we need to add back in the ducks column so it does need to match exactly the way we did it before you can see why change would be helpful um, sometimes we um, need to do different functions in a migra migration and so that's why they provide up and down and that's a little bit of a more advanced topic when I specify my up and down I usually always run them up and down immediately uh, to make sure I didn't make any errors so, um, status will again show us that we have one yet unrun. So we'll do migrate. Oh, error, migrate. And then roll back. No errors. And then we can, of course, migrate again. Uh, now we prove to ourselves that it works. Uh, that's just a sanity check that I do these days um, so that I make sure that all of my migrations can go up and down. All right. Um, so what did that do for us? Oops. Rails. C. Duck. Now our duck has an ID, an email, uh, a color created at, updated at, and a birth date. So now I want to add, um, now I want to add uh, an index. And I'm going to add an index on email address because I, uh, another unique thing I can do for um, indexes I, is I can add a constraint on there to make sure everything is unique. We want to make sure that each duck only has one account, at least with one email address. So we're going to uh, enforce that. So Rails G. Um, I'm not going to commit here because you already know that uh, migrations are reasonably uh, permanent you can change them until you commit and push but um, 
but uh, it's a good idea to keep them static. Uh, know that they should stay fairly static. Uh, okay, so now we want to generate a new one here. So array, uh, Rails I didn't specify any attributes there, so when we head back over here, I'll have db migrate and so um, add index table name ducks and we want it on email and let's pull up. Chrome here and show you where I'm getting some of this. Uh, not that so big. Okay, add index. So <clears throat> we can create a unique index, and to do that, we just pass unique true next to it. So All right, so uh, we'll just use a change for this because uh, the opposite of add is just remove, so we don't have to pass any special parameters out. We can just do this. Okay, so we're done there. And break db migrate. Unique true, add it, it added an index. Um, and so let's uh, rails g uh, rails console I want to get straight into the rails console not run another generator uh, duck nothing changed there but if we do duck duck create email error there um, okay we created our duck now let's create the same duck again oh big stack trace what did we do wrong let's go up to the top active record record not unique and then it tells us the exception from uh, passed up from the database adapter so what this means is that uh, it blocked us creating uh, this it would work just fine. So now we have a constraint on just uh, on a just one email address uh, can exist in that column in the database. Um, one one unique one. It cannot occur on multiple rows. So uh, so if we do duck pluck email we see our two different email addresses we have no repeats uh, pluck is uh, not related to duck at all although that is kind of a funny play on words there um, okay so uh, another way that I want to point out um, that we could have created this index uh, this unique index is when we initially created duck or when we initially had the email address here uh, we could also do unique true here and that would have also created the unique constraint and the index uh, the reason why I also did it here is because there are several reasons why you would want to add it add other indexes uh, the help file over here, uh, the documentation file, tells a bit more about that. Um, we could create one on multiple attributes. Um, uh, we could also be looking things up by, um, say we have a certain uh, foreign key or 
uh, we look things up by a, uh, a category ID or something like that uh, and that would create faster lookups for us if we created multiple indexes. Uh, you should read a bunch more about indexes. They're really helpful things. Um, the one caveat I want to give you is don't over index every, uh, or don't over index your tables. Uh, if you put an index on every single attribute, uh, it's just going to slow things down. So there is a point at which uh, it it is helpful. So there you are. That's the basics of migrations. Uh, enjoy.